Libra singles, super singles, totally singles, completely singles. So I'm looking forward with this reading for the end of October. Meet the soulmate read. It's always positive because I simply ask the question, who's the right one for Libra? Who's the soulmate that's best for you to do your work with right now, to couple with? And um, I like to look at it as we've cleared the runway. You're super single, so meaning, you know, they've maybe been flying around waiting to land, but they can't because there's no runway. You've been busy with other people, your life, whatever. But now you're kind of like, okay, here's a spot for you. They come down. We're going to meet them. I'm going to try to get to get a read on them. Uh, astrology comes a lot, so we'll keep those. I'll be pulling out the major astrological signs of this person. Uh, personal history, psychology, behavior, kind of get an idea of what they may be like, you know, say on a date. Um, uh, so hopefully by the time done, uh, you would recognize that when you see them. I don't see this as being someone you've met yet. It's a purely predictive breed, guys. So we're going to pull eight cards. We're going to look at their emotional aspect here, the Seven of Cups. Okay. We're going to look at the over the King of Wands. This is in their emotional column. I look at the four aspects of a relationship, emotional, intellectual, sexual love, and lifestyle core values. We'll look at the intellectual justice here. There's probably going to be a Libra Sun right there. The Queen of Cups there. They might have their um, Mercury and Cancer, though. They might have more energy in Cancer. We'll see. Thinking about, I'm going to see the moon here with the Seven of Cups and the King of Wands. Give me a minute to come back to that. We'll look at their sexual death. Nice. Scorpio energy. Okay. Hard to get Scorpio energy in Venus and Mars with uh, Libra energy. But they could have a Venus uh, and or Mars um, Probably their Venus could have it in the eighth house or conjunct Pluto, trine Pluto. There's a lot of ways that could go. As an astrologer, I know you can't make that much out of one placement. There's so many different ones that bring the same energy, so it's hard to say. If you have more than one, which one's doing it? it just means it's really going to be there. The fool in the sexual position. Guys, I got to tell you, I'm a Venus in Scorpio with a Mars, you know, in Sagittarius, and I'm I'm kind of hot here. <laughs> This is like, wow. Um, again, with the Scorpio energy here. I kind of see the Seven of Cups, too. It can be Scorpio energy. We might have a Scorpio moon. That would make a lot of sense. Libra Sun, uh, Scorpio moon, Cancer Mercury. You know what this could be? It could be a Cancer Venus. Yeah. Because we've got the Fool here, I'm just thinking that could be the Cancer Venus. And if they're in Libra, it would make sense to have Venus in Scorpio like I do. So imagine you have a Scorpio moon and you have a Venus in Scorpio. They're already simpatico uh, by sign, and most likely by whatever house they're in. Um, we might be dealing with an eighth house uh, Venus energy here. Uh, so imagine now, uh, Scorpio's in the eighth house. I'd make them an Aries rising. You know, you can add Aries rising. Um, not 100% on that. It could be their sun's in the eighth house, though. But, you know, still, that's getting it narrowed down. Um... And I just see the Cancer Mars with the Fool in this position. Um, I, I, I want that water with them. And, you know, uh, Cancer Mars is kind of terrible. Um, they will uh, kind of do anything for the other person. You know, that's kind of like, you know, we need to go jump off this cliff. I need you to do it with me. And you will just do it. You know, it's the housewife position. Uh, it's debilitated there. It's sad though because really uh, it just wants to give which it's nothing wrong with giving That's great. Personally, I've had in my life uh, Cancer Mars 
I love it. It goes with Venus and Mercury going so good. Venus uh, in Scorpio with the death here and then. So um, that, that would be very good energy for me. But I have a Cancer Mar uh, moon. So, you know, I'm very, very emotional. And, you know, um, I like to think, you know, kind of soft. And, you know, like they, uh, Cancer uh, Mars is very vulnerable, very vulnerable. So they can be easily taken care of. And if they're, you know, uh, Libra, Sun, then they're probably drawn to relationships. This person may have stories then about bad relationships. Hard to know if they'll tell them. With a Scorpio moon, they're about the most uh, closed. You know, they're usually not going to... If they tell you a story, it's probably not the really juicy one. Uh, it's an anecdote they have to just throw you off the path from the really juicy one. Because they will keep it to themselves. Um... But I know with the Venus and Scorpio, it's uh, the energy of transformation is brought to love. So how's it going to work? Well, are you either going to transform with the same person? That's hard. I've been married 25 years. Or are you going to have multiple relationships? And that love is how you learn and transform. It's not uncommon for Venus Scorpios. Um, because it's very karmic, very intense. Especially you add in the Scorpio moon. And you're all about relationships here. But I see this King of Wands down in the bottom, it, along with the Queen of Cups. They're a very balanced and they're Libra Sun. So the way you're going to perceive this person is not the Scorpio stuff and not the Mars stuff. So uh, this is your person. I'm not saying they're par um, poor, um, perfect. But, you know, when I talk about compartmentalization, I say we're humans. And this sometimes this is how we need to, our ego is there to keep us together etc you know with the seven of cups here there's some kind of a shady childhood with your person i'm thinking about it it's like they're so guarded about it that it's i and i and personally i don't like when someone guards their space last thing in the world i want to do is like okay respect i respect the physical humans you know it's like yeah i get it um you tell me if you want don't tell me that's your, that's your stuff um so it's kind of sacrosanct it's almost like i'm unwilling to go there um, so this person might have a little bit of power, like uh, it might be an eighth house or uh, in the occult or something like this, doing this psychic work. They certainly could um, here. Um, but I tell you, when they love you, I mean, they're going to all kind of love you. And you're going to feel like I have never, ever been loved like this before. But it's scary. So Libra, be prepared. It's like if you've always been saying, I really want this deep emotional relationship. The Venus and Scorpio will die for you. They will kill for you. If you go to hell, they will go to hell. You know, but the minute you disrespect them, the minute you take them for granted, the minute you show them that there isn't a strong, powerful, emotional connection, they're all emotional, let's see with this Mars energy here, with the Scorpio moon, um, it's over. And it can be over forever with them. Um, and they will go into your soul. You know, George Bush had that thing with the Putin, I stared into his soul. No, they're actually going to stare into your soul. or your soulmate. There's no problem there. But I imagine they do that to a lot of people. And I got a feeling they, they hold back uh, the way they present themselves, the King of Wands, Queen of Cups. As you meet them, they're very charming. Charming is the key word. Debonair even. I mean, go there. Um, um, smart, um, erudite, um, they're um, deferential, disarming, all these things. Um, confident, very confident, uh, uh, feeling, they feel confident, like they, they project to people around them uh, confidence, like probably uh, people would take them in a certain way, you know, like if you're in a group of people talking, I mean this person talking, other people are not as likely to cut this person off when they're talking, watch this. You know, and they're not trying, it's just the way they are. They just have a solidness about them, a well-rounded groundedness about them. And I think um, when the doors close and you go in the bedroom, um, they're going to be possibly submissive. Um, could be a switch, but it's going to be like intense. Like uh, sex is really important to them and it's very emotional. Like if you feel like, hey, you know, I don't like to have a lot of emotions in sex, it can't be your person. You know, because that they would see that as this uh, this violation of your uh, Scorpio Venus is conditional love. It's not unconditional love. Okay, it's not Venus and, and Aquarius. You know, or Pisces. No, 
it's like very conditional. And if you violate the conditions, it could be a real deal breaker. But in terms of sex, they would be completely vulnerable and kind of going to want you to be completely vulnerable. Death, Scorpio, Venus, they're going to kind of want to make you emotionally vulnerable. Uh, uh, Cancer, Mars here. Um, look for very, very intense uh, sexual experiences. I would be surprised after sex, they actually break down and cry. I'm only saying that because uh, do not be alarmed. This is probably a normal thing for them. It's actually a good thing. If they can break down and cry with you, you know, I think if you stop for a second when it happens and go, wait a minute, they came, I came, it was awesome. Mm. Oh, well, they're just releasing this energy. It's a Cancer Mars thing. If they have all this emotion and they got to let it out somewhere. And I think they're, they, that's why I say they could be a little submissive. Maybe that's where they want to lose control and be able to release energy of release, you know, um, this person in, in sex. And I said at the beginning, I mean, it sounds uh, juicy to me. I'll take it, you know. <laughs> so, Four Swords. This is uh, their core values I'm looking at. And lifestyle issues. Four Swords. And Two of, uh, two of Pentacles. So, uh, this is an interesting position. I usually don't see someone like this. Uh, I don't see so clearly someone around their home. I'm trying to think of how this would translate into, they heal people. I mean, this is a classic personality. It would be like a, a social worker, a, a therapist, a psychologist, a, something like this um, that may heal people. And the two of pentacles. So when it comes to their home, they will have pretty strong opinions about the home. And it's not like they're controlling, mm, kind of. They want it to be their way. Like, I tell you this, they're not going to want strangers. They're not going to want, the, like, Seinfeld energy, people popping in and out, and any kind of erratic energy. They don't want that in their life, I think. Um, they may have been through some relationships, but they quickly probably rebalance, and um, something they learned from childhood, they still can't figure out. They don't want me to know. Um, but with the King of Wands here, my guess is a strong father figure who's a fire sign. Usually this is a grandfather. Could be someone else steps in here, Libra, to their life somewhere during their probably later childhood, early teens, and um, extricates them from a difficult situation, forms a very strong bond. This individual will be the one they consider the, the, the parent, their love parent, um, past or, or not. If this person is past, is strong Leo energy in this person, um, then um, they are most definitely this person's angel. Let's throw that in there, 100%. If, honestly, if they haven't passed, they will be. As soon as they pass, they'll take that role. That's not a question there. Um, and you know, you could kind of say that your person kind of models themselves after this person. It's good because I really like this King of Wands here. Uh, for this person, especially balanced with the Queen of Cups. And so in the home, what they want, you know, is a certain order, stability, uh, probably peace. Um, they, you know, it probably wouldn't want a lot of, you know, loud music and partying. And I don't want to make them sound like a, like a fuddy-duddy, um, but they just would have a particular need for their home life to be a certain way. And I don't think that they have much concern about politics. Uh, they really might have like a, an eighth house person here that's somehow into the occult. Um, and so maybe one reason they want their home like this is, you know, they have their, uh, they have an, idols and objects, power objects, uh, temples that they have, whatever they may have going on. They don't want that energy mixed with uh, frivolous energy from the outside. So let me know if you like this, guys. Do leave a comment. It helps. Like is great. Share. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. And uh, please do subscribe. Thank you, guys.